what's the difference between Remar, UWorld, and Kaplan? UWorld is known for having a lot of questions and rationales. Kaplan is known for having NCLEX content, tons and tons of it. Remar has both. We have questions that will help you develop critical thinking, and we also have content, but not tons and tons of it. Just what you need to know to pass NCLEX and be a great nurse. Plus, we're more affordable. That's the difference. I passed NCLEX with Remar. You world has not showed me anything better than Remar. Questions, awesome. Like she says, content, content, content. She has it. I passed. And you can. You will. You must pass too. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday Motivation, how to pass NCLEX, all that good stuff. Man, so we're going to talk about osteoarthritis today, which is an important topic for the NCLEX exam. But I have to let you guys know that, I, number one, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. This is the start of a great week. This is actually the final the final day of the V2 sale, the V2 sale. So um, shout out to everybody that has been on live with me all morning on TikTok, Instagram, as we've been just hashing through getting started in your V2, using the study calendar, making this the best day for you to say yes to passing your NCLEX. That's all been happening this morning. So if this is the first time you're seeing me, then you're late to the party because we've been going hard all morning. So come on in and read my nurses. I missed y'all this weekend. This weekend went by too slow for me because I really did miss uh, you guys. So I appreciate all the DMs and the comments that you guys have been sending me all weekend. Let's get into this topic osteoarthritis. Let's go. So osteoarthritis is commonly known as a what? A degenerative joint disease. You guys know this, but what is it? What is it? When we talk about osteo, what does osteo mean? Put that on, put that in the comments. If you know the medical prefix of osteo, you know what we're talking about. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon, actually, depending on where you are. Oh man, shout out to the Philippines. I'm so excited. I'm going there. I'm coming to the Philippines next year and I'm so excited about it. Um, osteo means bone. Now, what does arth mean? So we have bone, we have osteo, and then we have arth. What does that mean? Bone and what else? Because it's the osteoarthritis. So this is very important. And I thought I saw somebody put it on. Yep, so we have osteo means bone. Good job, good job. A, and then we have arth meaning joint. Excellent, excellent, Chad. So we know we have a bone and then we have a joint and then we have ritis or itis. And we know that that means inflammation. So this is where we are. And remember, I told you guys, when we're studying for NCLEX, we can learn a lot about the situation just by the name. The name can tell us exactly what's going on. So when you're reading those long case studies on your NCLEX exam, slow down, slow down, because the answer that you're looking for is in that long paragraph or in that case study, okay? Okay. Um, and, and that's one of the benefits of taking next gen NCLEX is they give you the answer. They give you the answer. So osteoarthritis, commonly known as degenerative joint disease, is the most prevalent kind of arthritis. It's the most common kind of arthritis. And so what happens is um, it develops when the protective layer of cartilage, when the protective layer of cartilage um, which cushions the bone ends, deteriorates, okay, over time. And so all these changes that happen, you know, they start off and then they're not so bad. They're not so bad at first, but then, my alarm, sorry guys. Um, so they, they're, they're not so bad at first, but then they get gradually worse over time, okay? And so there are two types of osteoarthritis and 
these names should be very familiar to you just in general, because when we talk about something that is a primary cause or something that is a secondary cause, the definitions of primary and secondary never change, never change. So if we talk about something as a primary cause, let me go back to it. The primary cause is when it is most directly due to that condition. So you're having inflammation of actually the bones and joints. And so most frequently, where does osteoarthritis affect? The fingers, the thumbs, the back, the hips, the knees, and the big toe, okay? And so this is a primary condition because it is directly related to the patient's deteriorating cartilage, okay? Secondary means that it is happening because of something else that is causing this condition to come on, okay? So for example, um, I say here, it develops alongside another pre-existing joint abnormality, such as people who play football, um, and they are constantly getting sports related injuries or trauma. Well, because the sport related injury is causing unnecessary wear and tear to that joint, then inflammation is going to occur. Inflammation is going to occur. So does that make sense? It's like, mm, see, what can else, what can we apply primary and secondary to? So like tachycardia, okay? We If we move this into another area of the body, which is how you pass NCLEX, right? You take what you have mastered in one subject and you just move it over to the another subject. So if I say the patient comes in and they have tachycardia and I say it is a result of a fever, is that tachycardia primary or secondary? What do you guys think? Is that a primary tachycardia or a secondary tachycardia? The tachycardia is a result of a fever. Primary or secondary? And this is what I love about our study sessions because I get to challenge you guys. Oh, let's see what the Remar nurses are saying. Hmm. Okay. So tachycardia. Remember, what, I, what did I say the definition of primary was? I said, if it's primary, I said, if it's primary, then it is a result of what? Of the actual thing. Like, it's a result of the actual organ or situation being a dysfunction. So if we're talking about tachycardia and I say it's a result of a fever, is it a condition with the heart? Or is it something outside of the heart causing the heart to be irregular, right? So it's secondary, right? That fever is a secondary, um, it's a secondary cause of tachycardia. Now, if I say the patient has, you know, atrial flutter, right? And there's some tachycardia there, primary or secondary. That's primary tachycardia, okay? And so we can do this with, everything else. We can do this with everything else, okay? Primary and secondary. So be prepared to be challenged on your NCLEX exam. Now, be prepared to have to critically think, but the only way that you improve in your critical thinking is by knowing the what, the content. You can't think critically about something you don't know. So if you don't know the definition of primary and secondary causes, you're not going to be able to critically think about what it is and what it's not. All right. So everything, okay, everything goes back to the time that you invest in studying this content. I don't care about question banks. I don't care about them. They don't teach you. They evaluate you, but they don't teach you. So we got to get back to, you know, where it's good. All right. 
So the fever was a secondary cause. Let's move on to studies suggest some causes. So what are some causes of osteoarthritis, which is what we're actually talking about? Studies suggest a combination of environmental and body elements may contribute to developing osteoarthritis, but the exact cause is unknown. Okay. Now joint injury. So overusing a joint that hasn't had time to heal from an injury or surgery, definitely. Okay. Also other conditions, osteoarthritis may develop if, you know, there is a, a pre-existing ailment such as um, rheumatoid arthritis or gout um, or somebody's badly injured. All right. Age. Age is a huge factor in whether you will develop osteoarthritis. And I think some of us, as we get older, we feel it coming on, you know, we see it approaching us um, when it rains, right? That's what, that's what my grandma says. When it rains, have you guys ever heard that? Is that just like a, my family thing or like when it rains, my family knows that they're going to have joint pain. Um, so that, I don't know, that might be cultural. Um, other causes are genetics. Okay. Osteoarthritis may exist in families. However, no single gene has been proven to cause this. And this is based on studies, okay? Obesity. And you guys pay attention to this because you guys know we do questions at the end of this session. Extra body weight puts an additional strain on the joints, especially the ones that bear the most weight. So what is that? That is the knees and the hips. Mm -hmm. And gender. Why is this? Osteoarthritis affects more women than men. Anybody know that? All right. Okay. Now let's go on. This is content. This is how you study content. You, you take time and you just review it. You take time and you review it. So the symptoms of osteoarthritis frequently appear gradually. So they come and then they go, but then they get worse over time. And so these are the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis. You have pain, pain that happens during movement. Not so much when you're sitting still, but when you move. Joint stiffness, joint stiffness where? In the morning, in the morning, all right? Or after you have been sitting for a while, you tend to get stiff, uh, your body stiffens up. Tenderness, when somebody touches parts of your knee or your hips, they are sore and then loss of flexibility. So uh, unfortunately our patients, they, they lose their range of motion when they suffer with osteoarthritis. And so how that affects them is that, you know, they lose, they lose the ability uh, for certain things in the quality of life. So certain things become challenging to them. If you have this book here, Quick Facts for NCLEX, the next gen edition, you're going to find osteoarthritis here on page 64. And so um, uh, this this actually is one of the larger topics. It takes up, can you see, it takes up almost half a page. So some good stuff in here. I do think you should spend some time if you have the Quick Facts book. Also remember, if you have this book, then the sale price of the V2, another alarm. The sale price of the V2 goes from 89 to 69. Okay. So that is half of the benefit of having the, this book. You got half of the program. All right. So let's go quick facts. All right. Now moving on to this also loss of flexibility. So the joint might be unable to, to move. I said that a grating sensation. And so you can hear it I don't know if it's as painful, but you can definitely hear your joints cracking or popping when you have osteoarthritis. It's it's um, you know, it's it's just something that happens because of the loss of cartilage. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Bless me. Bone spurs. Oh man, my mom is dealing with this right now. But extra bone fragments, which feel like hard lumps, can grow around the afflicted joint, and bone spurs are very painful very painful. And then you have soft tissue inflammation around the joint as well. How do you diagnose, how do you diagnose osteoarthritis? What is the best way to do that? 
A physical exam, of course, where your doctor will examine the affected joint for inflammation, swelling, redness, and flexibility. X-rays. So pay attention to this. Cartilage does not show up on x-ray scans, but the narrowing of an area between the bones and the joint can show cartilage loss. And so bone spurs around a joint can be seen on an x-ray. MRIs, what is the MRI going to show you? So MRIs are going to create a comprehensive image of the bone and soft tissues. Now remember, MRIs take a longer time to develop but they give you more detail. So you will be able to see the cartilage from an MRI, okay? Blood testing. Now, is there a specific test, a blood test for osteoarthritis? No. It is a test that will be done, though, to rule out you having other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis because there is a test that can um, point a doctor in the direction of a patient has rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. So understand that. And then sometimes they will do a fluid analysis by injecting a very long needle into the joint space to take the synovial fluid from that space and send it from, for analysis. So there's many ways you can approach osteoarthritis, but for the majority of the time, if you have an older patient, they're coming in, they're complaining of joint stiffness in the morning, right? You want to get it down to whether this is rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. And so these are the ways that you're going to be able to determine that, okay? Uh, you have, sor 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 how do you say that? Sor sorotic arthritis. Am I saying that right? Which is a different type. I'm glad you put that up here. All right. Now, let's go on to talk about psoriatic. That's how you say it. I knew it's, it's going to come to me. Medications, part of our content review is we got to know what something is. We got to know the cause, the signs and symptoms, and absolutely the diagnosis and the treatment. These are the proponents of studying the content. So the medications that we give. Yes, 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 yes. NSAIDs. NSAIDs, they help to reduce inflammation. They will do that. Okay. Now, if we're giving a patient an NSAID, what I want you to do is help out your other classmates here and put some of the teachings that we give about NSAIDs. What are some of the warnings that we have to tell our patients who we're going to be starting on NSAID therapy? You might think of anything. If you don't know, listen, if you don't know, we're just doing incest right now. Go to the back of your, go to the back of your um, quick facts for next gen and let's get into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's go with this book here. All right. Um, oh, I like that. Let's just do it from the comments here from our Remar nurses. So take with food. Watch out for bleeding. Oh, I love it. Keisha, coming through today. Okay. Do not give it with aspirin. No blood thinners. Okay. Take with food. Gastric irritation that they can cause ulcers, right? Mm -hmm. Good job, guys. This is how, okay, this is how a study session is supposed to function. All right. There should be one main person who is presenting the information as an overview, and then everybody there is contributing to what they know in different points, okay? And then also, whenever you're giving teaching, you should always have a reason why you say something, okay? So if somebody says, well, what do you mean liver toxicity? Why liver toxicity? Then you should be able to explain to them why liver toxicity, okay? while they were toxicity. All right, patient says bleeding precautions and report any bleeding on gums, et cetera. And you say, hey, it's hard on the liver. That's it. Didn't you go to nursing school? It's hard on the liver. Um, yeah, okay. So great job, guys. This is how we contribute. Now, oral, energy, um, oral, oral analgesics, acetaminophen, and other pain medicines have... Um, they can lessen the pain, but not the swelling. So this is very important because part of the pain is because of the swelling and the inflammation that is there. So if you're giving an analgesic, 
all it's going to do is block the pain receptors. Okay. All it's going to do is block the pain receptors. Now, topical anesthetics, these are the things that they buy over the counter. You guys know them, the creams, the gels, the patches. Um, they can relieve discomfort, particularly for mild arthritis symptoms, and they can assist in pain and joint relief. So some over-the-counter things, what, what, um, ben, Bengay, Asper cream, the stuff you see on TV. And so we just let our patients know that um, whatever those things touch, those creams and gels, they're going to numb the area. So, you know, be careful when you're putting it, putting them on. Because if you get them on like your skin and things like that, they're going to numb that part of your body. And they're going to be a temporary, temporary, very short term for pain relief. Okay. Great job, guys. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, does anyone use Vicks Vapor Rub? I feel like Vicks Vapor, Vapor Rub could do it a little bit because it has that menthol in there uh, for sure. But yeah, let, let us know. Let us know. Are we using are we using VIX or are we not using VIX? Because we like to stay on point here. All right. Um, so I got to pull up my slides again. They went away. Let me go here. OK, so we did classification. We did symptoms. Lidocaine patches. True. Lidocaine patches. True. Let me go. Add this to the screen. OK, so the topical um, and analgesics. Therapy, different types of therapy as well. So you have physical rehab. And when you do physical rehab, the physical therapist will demonstrate exercises that can improve flexibility, decrease pain, strengthen the muscles around the joint. All right. Now, occupational therapy is an occupational therapist is going to help the client be able to perform specific daily tasks. So putting on a pair of pants, reaching up for a, you know, a cup, a cup in the cupboard, going up the stairs. That's the difference between physical therapy and occupational therapy. So nursing students, please take note of this. All right. <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. Y'all are like, we're using the VIX. And somebody's like, no, no, no. VIX is just for the cold. Like, don't know. It's only for congestion. Um, uh, and I love this. Look at the representation. The Haitians and the Jamaicans are using castor oil. So, so now y'all now y'all get very specific. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love Remar nurses. We are all over the globe. We are all over the globe. So um, transcutaneous. Let's look at this name. Transcutaneous means through the skin, over the skin. Electrical. So we're using some electricity. Nerve stimulation or TENS units. And patients can get a prescription for this, but also you can buy these as well. And so what happens is here, this uses a low voltage electrical current to treat pain. So it's like it causes pain, but then it treats pain at the same time. All right. Um, and so it gives short-term relief to clients with knee and hip osteoarthritis. That makes sense? All right, TENS machines. Does anybody know all right, um, about TENS machines? All right, because we definitely we definitely know about it. Uh, Jessica, shout out to her. I got to pause for the cause. This is Monday Motivation, by the way. Hey, Nurse Regina, I passed my NCLEX on July 20, 20th. I used Remar and it was dead on. I had so many questions related to the material that you covered. I am happy to say that I am a Remar nurse. My favorite my favorite words ever, please, remarnurse.com forward slash party. Go there, Jessica, because I want to send you a gift. remarnurse.com forward slash party. Congratulations. That is, um, that's so amazing. That is so amazing. I'm so proud of you, Jessica. Seriously. Um, we say congratulations to you. We say congratulations to you. Mystical Moondrop says, hello, Regina. I passed my NCLEX July 22nd. All right. I graduated four years ago. Let me, um, let me make this big again. I graduated four years ago. Um, I passed it using your system four to six weeks in Quick Facts book. I'm happy, I'm happy to read that. I'm actually really happy to read that because that is, um, that is what I recommend four weeks. And I know when people get on here and they, 
you know, people say, hey, I did your program in two weeks or one week. I'm, I'm glad to, you know, hear that you took your time. All right. Nice. The white, I got to shout this out to you. I just started Chamberlain University, nowhere close to NCLEX, but I see this pops up and I heard about you. And I'm glad you heard about me and you're here and you're learning. You just started Tra Chamberlain University. Congratulations. We got all, oh, we got nursing students from all over the globe, Dwight here, which you'll, you'll see. We got all, so many representations of nurses and cultural competency here. You're going to love it. And we also don't care how much or how little you know, because we're all here to learn. So if you have something that you can contribute or something that I didn't say, just put it in the comments and I'll try to read it. Okay. All right, guys, let's get back into it now with the, um, I'm not sure. I got so many things going on right now. Somebody says, Dwight says, hey, look, he found his people. I'm Jamaican and I'm already learning. We love Jamaica. We love Negril. We love Kingston. We love Devin's house. We love Jamaica around here. All right. Let me get back to this lecture because y'all gonna have me talking about Jamaica and everywhere else. All right. So now we said the tens, the tens works. So let's do this surgical and non-surgical procedures. And so surgery is often reserved for those with severe arthritis. Now, if the conservative therapies don't work, these are some other things, okay? These are some other things that may be considered. And so cortisone injections are one of them. Cortisone injections. Some of you guys have helped or maybe you've taken care of patients who get cortisone injections and so they may reduce comfort for a few weeks. They may reduce discomfort for a few weeks, but they are not at all permanent solutions. Lubricant injections where you have high, um, hyaluronic acid injections may alleviate pain by supplying some cushioning in the knees. And so um, hyaluronic acid is similar to the substance that is present in the joints. Yeah, so steroid injections, yep lubricant injections, and then bone realignment. So bone realignment is if osteoarthritis has caused greater damage to one side of the knee than the other, then the osteo um, osteotomy may be beneficial. And so this distributes the bone's weight away from the damaged area. But honestly, that sounds painful. That sounds just as painful to me as the arthritis which could be a problem, all right? Which definitely could be a problem for our nurses. Um, our, our nurses, our patients who need to be taken care of by nurses. Okay, it's time for NCLEX questions. Y'all get into it. Um, let me do our share goal. So how this works, if this is your first time and you're on YouTube, I do, YouTube likes to unlock the fifth question. So we're gonna do four questions irregardless, but if we get a certain number of likes, then that teamwork and that collaboration unlocks the fifth question. So right now we have how many likes on this video? We have 59 likes on this video, but almost 300 people watching. So we need to get to 140 likes. So we have 59 likes. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't liked this video, let's go. All right. First question is this, guys. Shout out Haiti in the house. Okay. First question is this. Here we go. The nurse provides health teaching to a recently diagnosed osteoarthritis client. Which of the following statements is true about its cause? Number one, a high purine diet causes osteoarthritis. Two, the exact cause is unknown. Three, it primarily affects men. Four, it usually begins to appear at the age of 30. Let's warm up. Let's go. Comments on the screen, guys. You know how this goes. You know how this goes. I'm introducing an easy question so everybody knows they can participate, okay? And then the questions will get more challenging. But right now, everybody should be a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> everybody should be a straight A because the correct answer here, and you guys know it, is this. Two the exact cause is unknown. So we talk about osteoarthritis. Studies suggest a combination of environmental and body elements may contribute to developing osteoarthritis, but, but, but the exact cause is unknown. All right, so that's all I'm gonna read from that. Next question is this. Here we go. 
The client with joint pain and difficulty walking is set for a series of diagnostic procedures to rule out osteoarthritis. Which of the following diagnostic tests demonstrate narrowing of the joint space? Number one, the ultrasound. Two, DEXA scan. Three, CT scan. Four, x-ray. And this is why studying the content first is so important because if you just try to do questions and you have not studied the thing that you're being asked about, then you know what you're doing? A whole bunch of guessing. You're doing a whole bunch of guessing. But I see the Remar nurses are, um, for the most part, y'all on one accord. Correct answer being, wow, we only need 13 more likes. We had 127. We only had to go to 140. Amazing. All right. Correct answer is number four on the x-ray. So osteoarthritis is defined, okay, by a loss of joint cartilage. So which shows a narrowing of joint spaces, and that is on the x-ray, okay? The x-ray does that. Yes, good job, everybody. Question number three, I'm rolling, I'm rolling, all right? This says, the nurse discusses osteoarthritis during a health class in a community. Which of the following statement is true about treating osteoarthritis? Number one, NSAIDs help to regenerate cartilage. Two, the effect of cortisone injection is lifetime. Three, injection of lubricant like polyglutamate acid may provide relief for joint pain. Four, surgery is advised for severe case of osteoarthritis. All right, this is the one which, which what are you guys saying? Did I trick somebody here? I wanna see if I, um, if my distractor fooled somebody here, um, I'm not sure, actually. I think it did. Yeah, I think it did. All right, so were you paying attention to my lecture today? This question will demonstrate if you were or not, for real. All right, correct answer here is going to be number four. Mm -hmm. Surgery is advice for severe cases of osteoarthritis. And you guys know that when all of the medical treatments fail, when all these temporary measures fail, it is going to come down to that knee replacement, that hip replacement, right? And that uh, that is going to be what the doctors are going to suggest after a while. All right. So we need to be preparing our patients for that that everything else is pretty much temporary. Mm, man. Question number four is this. The nurse assesses a client with osteoarthritis who arrives at the clinic. Which of the following findings is related to osteoarthritis? Select four that apply. Here we go. This is a next gen type question. All right. So number one, select four that apply. Sit, uh, joint stiffness after prolonged sitting. Two, bluest discoloration of the toes. Three, swelling in the ankle. Four, limited range of motion. Five, redness and rashes near the affected joint. Six, bone spurs around the affected joint. Very good, guys. Very, very good. I don't know if I got you guys today. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go. All right. Question answer is one, three, four, and six. Did you get this one right? See, and this is why I love, honestly, this is why I love writing next gen questions and doing next gen questions. Because for me, selecting a Four that apply is so much better to me than selecting all that apply. Just give me some direction. Like how many, how many of them are there? There. Just tell me how many and I'll find them. That's just my personal opinion, right? All right. All right. So yes, you guys got it. 
joint stiffness after prolonged sitting, swelling in the ankle, limited range of motion, bone spurs. All right. These are all symptoms of osteoarthritis. Okay. Now, we got question number five unlocked. I don't know. It was just as like a silent, like the number went up so quickly that I didn't even have to say, hey, um, what y'all doing? Give me 10 more. Like, like y'all, y'all got it. So here's question number five. All right, here we go. The nurse provides health teaching on how to avoid osteoarthritis. Who of the following are at a greater risk of developing osteoarthritis? Select three that apply. This is tricky. You know, the fifth one is always tricky. Number one, a 56 year old female with wrist injury. Two, a 48-year-old male with a BMI of 22. Three, an office worker who wears three inches high-heeled wedge daily. Four, an elderly retired bus driver with a history of vehicular accident. Five, a 38-year-old yoga instructor. Six, a 21-year-old female professional football player. Mm. So these are all, um, actually, these are all good cases of possible osteoarthritis. However, there's only three that are going to apply. I'm going to give you some time on this one. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Okay. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of different answers, actually. Hmm. All right, here's the correct answer, guys. One, three, and four. Ooh, how did you do? I, this was challenging. This was challenging. The 56-year-old female with a wrist injury. So she has, because there's a wrist injury in that age, okay, um, this is somebody who definitely can be at risk, all right? Um, the office worker who wears three inch high heel wedges daily, okay? This person is going to be putting some stress and wear and tear, okay? Every day you wearing three inch heels, okay, all right? And then for the elderly retired bus driver, okay? So this is just an older person. They're elderly in general, all right, and they have a history of a vehicular accident. So osteoarthritis can be caused by minor joint abnormalities, okay, double jointness and genetic disorders. Being overweight or obese can cause strain, such as on the knees as we age, okay. Osteoarthritis can develop after severe damage to a joint, such as the knee. Injury can also occur as a result of misuse over time. OK, so this is why we do. OK, this is why we do content. This is why we do questions. These are the live classes that really support you on your journey if you're in the V2. Um, so Somebody says, why? Why didn't we do six? Let's go back to six and let's just look at it. You guys can also um, talk about this. So why not two? Why not six? Great questions. So number two, 48 year old with male with a BMI of 22 is 22. Um, cause is 22 an obese person? Is this a BMI that you are, um, concerned about? Okay. Also, so that's why number two is fine. Number two is fine. Somebody said, why not six 21 year old? Okay. So is this a younger person or an elderly person? This is a younger person, professional football player. So right now this person, yes, they're a sports player, they're an athlete. And remember, I told you guys that, remember that I told you guys that with NCLEX, okay, with NCLEX, there are going to be more answers that are correct, okay? There are going to be questions that you can be like, mm, this person has these qualifiers, but you're only looking for three. And so you have to do the person who is at greatest risk or who has, who is at most risk. And so when you look at the other options, this person is not going to outbeat the office worker because they're younger, right? Um, and they're wearing daily heels. 
All right. And then also the other two people that we have, they're not going to do a 56 year old. They're not going to outdo a 56 year old with wrist injury. This person is older. OK. Or number four, the elderly retired bus driver. I cannot put six above three either. All right. So you have to just be very careful. But like I said, knowing the content, how do you get past this? Knowing the content, critical thinking. All right. Or doing things like this where we we, we talk about it. OK. All right. So um, and, and so, again, if you understand now why the right answer is the right answer, that's all I care about. I don't care if you guys come on here and get every question wrong. Just as long as when I say this is the right answer, you can follow why. All right. So thank you guys so much for the the questions, the osteoarthritis discussion. Now it's time for the motivation. Oh, my goodness. Here's some motivation right now. Nurse Irene says, hi, Miss Regina. Thank you for all your efforts. I passed NCLEX RN on the 20th of July using the five star quick facts. See, no, I like this. The five star quick facts in V2. God bless you for the test was like a class test. Amazing, guys. All right. I love it. So people ask me all the time, do I need to get the, you know, the new version of the quick facts? Um, but so what I've been saying is that prioritize the V2. Prioritize the V2. Don't go out and buy the same version or the different version of the book when you don't have the lectures. Okay. So thank you so much for this testimonial. Uh, I um, Congratulations again. Shout out to you. All right. Um, also, what else? Um, is three out of, if somebody says three out of five, good. If you were here for the whole class, three out of five is acceptable because I know there were two questions that were really challenging. Um, one, a lot of you guys, it was the, the acid question, the injection of the acid. I just literally switched out the word. So I took away hyaluronic and put in poly something. I can't remember. But if you just saw the acid and you picked it, it was just a matter that you didn't slow down and read. Okay. What you guys have to do. So you judge yourself if you didn't take the time to read the question. All right. Cause that's, that's probably going to be a, a reoccurring issue. Okay. All right, Karen says, I have V2 and Next Gen Quick Facts on August 18th. You're going to go in there and you're going to do it. You're going to do it. All right. You have everything you need and you're showing up for classes too. My goodness. Some of you guys need this. I'm not sure if Karen needs this. I think she has it. But some of you guys need this topic today. Monday motivation is this triage your overflowing plate. You got too much stuff on your plate. And I'm about to tell you how to triage it, get some of that stuff off. This is something I struggle with big time. Oh my goodness. Whoo. Do you have an overflowing plate these days? Dwight, go to remarnurse.com. Okay. Get the quick facts book. You need that. Okay. So the question is, do you have an overflowing plate these days? And this is so interesting because um, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, we can't do everything at one time. Okay. We can't do everything at once, even though we feel like we can, even though we pile stuff on our plate every day to get done, chances are we're not getting it done. All right. And you guys in nurse in nursing know that we have this term called triage. And this is what some of us need to do with our calendar, with our daily list of things that we have to do. And it's just so frustrating because at the end of the day, you realize I didn't get anything done that I was supposed to get done today. I, I didn't get that done. And so the reason why is because you need to triage it and triage in, in, in nursing, we sort out patients and we say, this patient is the priority, right? We work on prioritization. We say this patient can wait. This patient needs immediate attention this patient is not urgent. Well, we need to do that with the things on our list too. Um, and so I want to introduce this thing. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's called the Eisenhower matrix. And if you just look at this thing, it will help you so much in clearing off some of those things. So, all right, the Eisenhower matrix is essentially it's four quadrants. Now we know four quadrants <laughs> because of the abdominal cavity, but there are two categories for every quadrant. So here we go. So the task is either important or not important. That's just basic. That's just basic up and down. Is it important? 
Okay, if it's important and it's urgent, then we need to do it. And I'm gonna give you some examples. So just stick with me here. If it's important, but it's not urgent, then you guys should be scheduling it. Does that make sense? There are urgent things that are important that you need to do immediately. And then there are important things that are not urgent that you need to schedule to do later. Now, at the bottom here, you see not important, but urgent, okay? So things that are not important, but they're urgent, you need to give to somebody else to do. You need to delegate them. And then finally, this is this is the issue. This fourth box right here, things that are not important and not urgent, sometimes instead of deleting them, we move them to the green box, okay? So we're doing not important things, not urgent things, and we're giving them priority. So let me give you some examples. All right, so the first box that I talked about was the important and it was the urgent things. These are things we need to do now. So do is urgent and important. These are tasks that require immediate attention. Think of some things in your mind that are important and are urgent and you need to do them, okay? Because if you don't do them, you will have significant consequences. So we need to focus on completing them because if you don't do these things, a crisis is coming. Now, very few tasks are important and urgent. So let's look at it. Studying for you is important and it is urgent. That is something that if you don't do this, and I need you to prioritize NCLEX like this. If you don't do this, then you will not be prepared for the crisis that is coming. If you don't get your nursing license, if you don't stay in nursing school, Dwight, if you don't stay in nursing school and finish nursing school, the crisis that is coming, you will not be prepared for. You might say, what crisis is that, Regina? Do y'all see every day how you get online and it talks about artificial intelligence is taking jobs. It's going to take away 30 million jobs. People are getting laid off. Like there's going to be a severe work crisis coming. But is that going to affect nurses? No. It's not. If you have a nursing license, you don't have to worry about AI. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. Inflation. I don't have to tell y'all how expensive eggs, milk, cereal, gasoline. Oh my goodness. How it, the crisis of being able to survive on just a basic pay is it, it, it's outrageous. It's outrageous. And so if you are in a position to be able to improve the financial income of your family, but you're not doing anything about it, that's a problem. You getting your nursing license is urgent and it is important. You need to be investing in that now, okay? You need to be looking at the money that you spend making other businesses successful. Like I said, some of y'all spend, I asked y'all for $89 for the V2, for structure, for study system, for a, pro, a, 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 a course, an educational course that's going to prepare you for your on-the-job experience. You'll have the knowledge. Some of y'all spend $89 in DoorDash every month. Some of y'all spend $89 um, at the mall at the movies, Starbucks, you know, and it makes you feel good for a few hours, but then at the end of it, you don't have anything in return. Urgent and important. Studying is one of those things, okay? Complete any pending assignments. So if you're in school and you know you have to get something done, if you're in school and you know you have to get something done, get it done. Okay, paying bills. Why do we put off paying our bills? Those are urgent and important because every day you don't pay or you're late, you get late fees, 
you get stuff shut off, right? Some of us, some of us, we won't pay our bills, but we will go out and we'll buy new clothing items. We'll eat fast food. You know, we'll, we'll re up the Netflix, whatever. Okay. All right. And so paying bills, taking medications, that's urgent. That's important. You're supposed to do that. Your household emergencies This urgent is important. You got to do it. You got to pay the rent. You do. You got to do that. All right. <laughs> okay. And so these are things that you must do. Do y'all see the priority? So right now I'm looking at this list. There's some things I need to do right now that I've been putting off. I got to do it. All right. The important things, but are that things that are not urgent, you need to be scheduling time to do it. That means this doesn't get done before these things. These things get done first. Okay. These things you schedule. All right. So scheduling, it's not urgent, but it is important. And so these tasks do not require you to drop everything. They don't require your immediate attention. Allocate some time and effort later on, okay, to get these things done because they can become urgent later on, all right? Examples, exercising. Now, is exercising important? Yes. Is it urgent? Usually not, okay? But what happens is if you repeatedly put off doing these things, if you... All right. So you might not need to exercise right away, but do you need to get it done? Yes. Because the days that you don't exercise, they add up. They really do. Reading. Reading is important. There's something that you should be reading, growing yourself, growing your mind. You, you, cannot, you cannot be the same person you were 10 years ago today. That's unacceptable. You should not. You should have leveled up. OK, in some way over these last 10 years, I don't want to talk to your teenage self when I'm talking to you. I want to talk to an adult okay, who has mastered certain areas of their life. OK, non-emergent meetings. How man this right here. These meetings so much. All right. That's why I try to even keep our study sessions down. I don't want to meet with y'all every day. We have things to do. Minor, minor house repairs, organizing files. These are just some things, okay? Things that we, we need to get done, but we need to schedule them. Mark, if you're watching this, we got to get on the roof. We have to, all right? Now, not important, but urgent, you can delegate them, okay? Okay. Delegate urgent, but not important. And so these tasks require immediate attention, but they don't contribute significantly to your long-term goals. These are the things that soak up your time. These things that they're urgent, but they're really not that important, but they scream that they are important. This is very important. So you need to delegate these things or you need to really minimize the time you spend on these things because Again, at the end of the day, they are not important. They are not important to the long-term goals. All right, let me give you some examples of these because this box right here is the most dangerous box to me. All right, grocery shopping, get somebody else to do it. Gardening, event planning. I cannot even tell y'all how much time Remar nurses spend on birthday parties, anniversary parties, uh, Christmas parties, these event planning. Y'all will spend three hours planning a vacation that you don't even have the money to go on, but you want to one day. You want to go there. Y'all love looking at vacation places and vacation spots and vacation outfits and things like that. I know because y'all tell me. All right. They may seem like it's urgent because the birthday party is in two months, but at the end of the day, it's not important. It's not important. Like for me, this thing right here, and it, it takes up so much of your time reading restaurant reviews. Um, we got to stop. I know. And tell me what else I'm missing that you guys do. Looking at hairstyles, what things like this. 
right now, this big thing that I'm struggling with in my number three box is urgent, but it's not important, is getting a new car, right? So my um, the transmission on my car went out and we tried to figure it out. I, I hate new cars. I don't want the new car payments. I don't like them. I'm not that girl. Like I know some of y'all looking at veneers, glory, glory, glory. <laughs> um, so I hate new cars. I'm not that girl. Like I'm not going to be the one that's like driving around in a fancy, you know, whatever, Maserati, whatever. Um, and so I need a new car. I got a 2016 Suburban, right? And I love it. I don't want to get rid of it at all, but it, the transmission is not working. And so I spent like 45 minutes looking at new cars and it just was like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this at all. I need a new car. It's urgent. But at the long, at the end of the day, it's not important. It don't matter what I'm driving as long as I can get to A to B. Like, I just need to be able to put all my kids in a car with the stroller and all the other stuff and just go. Like, right? It don't really matter. So I have to find somebody to delegate this job to because I don't have time for it. It's urgent, but it's not important. And so I need y'all to feel me on this. The things that we spend a lot of time on are not important. And so what happens is the things in the green box never get done because this specific box right here screams like I got to get it now. We need food. We need groceries. I got to get it done. The yard is a mess. You got to get it done. Okay. So I'm not saying, no, Rosie, I'm not saying that your kid's birthday is not important. I'm saying that the time that it takes to plan a birthday party usually is more in terms of taking away from your long-term goals than adding to it. So for, for example, and this is just me being totally, totally transparent with you. If I don't have money, because I'm not working at a job that I'm supposed to be working at, right? If I'm not being paid as a RN, I really don't have hundreds of dollars to cash out on my kid's birthday party. Like I don't have it. Like I didn't have it, right? So I'm just trying to get you guys to prioritize um, how you spend your time and your money. Like there is a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. And I'm sure that hierarchy comes with like, you know, your values, your you know, your overall goals, but for the majority of you guys, your investment needs to be focused on the long-term goal, the long-term goal. All right. And if it's not focused on the long-term goal, then I want you to prioritize it. That's all I'm saying to you. So, um, and it's a hard message to have to give. Like every Monday when I come on here, I do have to balance you know, friendly, happy, motivation, Regina. And then just really, some of y'all don't need, you know, motivation. Some of y'all just need somebody to be honest with y'all. Y'all already have a lot of people in your life that are okay with you being in a comfort zone. Y'all already have a lot of people in your life that are patty caking y'all and patting y'all on the back for really being quite stagnant, like really being really stagnant. And nobody is really saying to somebody like, hey, what are you doing this week? Like, you supposed to be a nurse. You graduated four years ago. How close are you to getting that done? Very few people have that. And that's honestly because very few people, honestly, in life are trying to reach their goals. People are okay with being comfortable. People are okay with focusing on the green, the, 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 the box, right? You know what I mean? Like of the things that are time consuming, time wasting. Yes, you can spend two or three hours on TikTok. Because you see people on TikTok making TikToks and they're entertaining, right? They're instantly gratifying you because you laugh or you joke or you kiki with them. But at the end of the day, are those people pushing you to get to where you need to be? They're not. They're not. And so when you guys come here, I have to change the conversation that you're having. Because once you leave here, you might not hear nobody else talking about NCLEX. I was the only person in nursing school. I am the only person in my family that was a nurse, right? Before my sister went to nursing school. That was just last year. 
So nobody is going to be able to empathize with you the way that this community can. All right. Nobody is going to be able to speak to your struggle. So. Yeah, delete social media, delete it. All right. Keep YouTube so you can come here. But other than that, uh, cancel it. Because it's a distractor, it's a time vampire. And every two hours you spend on TikTok is two hours you could be spending uh, studying for NCLEX or looking for a job or motivating yourself. So um, it's just what it is. It's just what it is, guys. Things that you can delegate, man, things that you can delegate. Grocery shopping, gardening, event planning, pet care, all right, household chores. I had to, man, for me, honestly, <laughs> for the household chores, I had to make my kids start cleaning up after themselves. I was spending way too much time cleaning up after my kids. And I was one of those parents, you know, I grew up cleaning up my house. Like there was no such thing as, I, I mean, I'm an 80s baby. So like you cleaned up the house, all right? You cleaned up the house. But I always was really lax with my kids about, you know, they don't really feel like it. I can get their room. I can, you know, I could get the clothes together, things like that. I had to start asking my kids to help me clean up because I was cleaning up way too much or I would put it off and then it would be this huge ordeal. So you got to outsource some of that stuff within your house. The kids can help you clean up. All right. Pet care, they yeah, they don't really clean like you know. I'm 100 percent with you. They don't. I you know, and I got the I got the little kids. They don't clean like you do, but it does make a difference. It does make a difference. At least pick up the toys y'all brought out. Put the toys back. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, excellent job, Marie. And thank you so much. I know I talked to you on um Facebook, but I think you Instagram. I think you Instagram me too. All right. All right. So this is this is are some things that you can delegate if you can. All right. These are all just suggestions. Some things that we need to delete. Oh, some things that we need to delete. Things that are not important and not urgent. We just need to eliminate them. So delete not important, not uh, urgent. And these time these tasks are time wasters and distractions. OK, so we need to avoid them whenever possible to conserve time and energy for more meaningful things. So what are some things that we can delete and things that are not urgent? They're not important. And so even if I don't say anything, all right, even if I don't say anything on the list, maybe you guys can um, add these things to the list. So here they are. Social media. We talked about that. Watching TV. There was this guy that I really like, and he was talking about how he maximizes his time. And he says he only watches TV on Saturday night. Like on Saturday night, he gives himself permission to watch three hours of TV, whatever he wants. And I thought that was so cool because during the week, he knows, uh, 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 I don't I don't do that. I, I focus. I get my stuff done. All right. So maybe we could do that with social media. Maybe we could just reserve a day for, you know, for TikTok or whatever. Okay. Uh, eating junk food. I have eating junk food on here because I find that when I eat junk food, there is a process that happens. Like junk food gives you this high and you feel good while you're eating it. And you're just like, mm, 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 this is so good. But then after you eat it, what happens to you? What happens after you get your sugar rush and you're eating the ice cream and you're feeling good and you're watching the TV and you laughing and joking and kiki and... Then after you have the crash and when you have that crash, my goodness, it takes you out of the game. Like you literally cannot focus. You literally cannot <laughs> that like you have to recuperate from that one uh, whatever ice cream cake or whatever you eat like that. Th those two cupcakes, those eight Oreos, that pack of whatever it takes some time for it to get out of your system and you feel mentally foggy that the, the that artificial sugar and things like that my goodness okay gossiping gossiping is a big time waster and what it does for me is like you think people are gossiping with you because 
they want you to have this information. But what it's doing is it's creating like a trauma bond. And so the gossiping that you share with somebody, y'all going back and forth with each other. But what happens is it takes away your ability to have a healthy relationship with somebody because all y'all can do is just gossip. And so that's what the whole relationship becomes about. It just becomes about gossiping where you don't really connect with that person on a higher level. And so it, it essentially it wastes your time and it doesn't end up allowing you to have healthy relationships with people because it's like, well, if you gossiping with me, you gonna gossip about me too. Repetitive, repetitive checking of phone or devices every five minutes, like looking at your Facebook, looking at, you know, did I get likes? Did I get comments? Did that person respond to me? You know, things like that. So repetitively checking your devices and your phone as well. Every two minutes, every five minutes, it eats up a lot of time. So these are things that we can think about um, that definitely will help us when you're, when you're putting the Eisenhower matrix in. So by using the Eisenhower matrix, you can triage your tasks effectively. So just think about those categories, guys. And I want to ensure that you are investing your time, energy, and resources, which is your knowledge. All right. That's what you have. That's your greatest resource. It is your knowledge and what you are giving that energy to. Okay. I hope that those things can align with your goals and bring you closer to your success. Okay. That is what I want for you guys at the end of the day. I literally do want the best for you guys. Rosie says, I'm the most boring person. I don't watch TV. I'm not on social media. I have no friends because they all pass NCLEX. And I hear what you're saying, but understand this is the grind. You're going to, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to stay in this place. And, and, and it was one of the things I was talking about when you don't pass NCLEX, it can feel so isolating. It can feel so isolated, but I hope you know that right now there are 300, there are over 300 people that are here with you in the same space. Okay. We're in the same space and we're all working together. And guess what, Rosie? We are waiting for your testimonial. We're waiting to hear it. All right. So my goodness, we are done with the episode. That's it. This is our Monday study session. I will be back on Wednesday at 9 p.m. for another study session. I think I'm coming back on later tonight, though because I do want to answer questions specifically about the V2 for you guys who have it and you want to know, hey, how can I use it? All these things. Definitely, I want to come back and answer these questions. I want to make sure you know about the new study calendar in the file vault. I put some files in there about beta blockers. And what else did I put in there? Something else, some more documents. So as the sale is coming to a close, I want to encourage you guys to take the next step because today's price is not tomorrow's price okay so the v2 is going from 89 dollars to 169 tomorrow so let's spend the day hashing through what we need to do uh, whether it's get you in the trial so you can see if it's right for you or if not it's not but the whole point is that you take a positive step in the right direction all right okay guys i will see you later thank you so much for watching Bye bye